Welcome to this short and simple tutorial about how to use the new bundle color balancing technique. The bundle color balancing technique is a new way to easily color balance your imagery with powerful functionality and ease of access. In this example, I'll be working with a large project that contains approximately 6,600 images and is just over 6 terabytes in size. Here you can see the full overview of the project. I'm flickering between the unedited bundle color balanced imagery and the final product that I've manually edited in just some areas. Here as you can see, if I pan over most of the land, the majority of the balancing has done a good job. It's only in the areas with a lot of glint in the water that the balancing has made a few errors. This is because of the automatic dodging is trying to compensate for the bright glare by darkening the rest of the image the bright area is part of. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be opening up only the worst areas of this dataset and manually editing them with the standalone mosaic tool. So uh, here's our imagery. It looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in just a bit so we can uh, take a bit, a bit of a closer look. As you can see, it's pretty well balanced. There's some rough areas, I guess, where we have the glint in the water, which has affected it. Um, it's hard to match that up sometimes. But, uh pretty much looks fairly good. There are two types of dodging points uh, that we have currently. We have the edge point and we have the floating point, and each one uh, interacts with each other a bit differently. Um, all of the automatically generated dodging points that have been put here, they're all going to be uh, edge dodging points. There will never be any floating dodging points in this case. Mm -hmm. And essentially what the, f what the edge dodging point will do, um, if you increase the dodging brightness or contrast, you'll see it's affecting everything along this line, along this cut line here. In this case, it will never interact with another dodging point. So if perhaps, for an example, let me uh, put this back to what it, what it was de its default setting. Uh, we can place another one. As you see, it snaps. It'll snap to the, to the cut line, so you can't place anything past that. Um, you notice the previous one was going all the way down the image, but now if I place one here, select our original one as you can see it's not ever going to go past this point so it can be useful if you have a certain area that you don't want to be affected perhaps this land wants to be affected but not this land if you place a, a point in between then it would you know, can prevent that from uh, altering each other um, using the slider bars uh, a, a good way to do it, but for the, for the finer uh, increases and decreases in brightness, um, you can use either the fine increase or decrease, the coarse increase, or you can nullify, which will just put it back to its original, or you can undo the previous thing that you just did. Um, this sliding bar is the same for all. You can pl place also some floating points. Um, these ones are not going to be snapped towards the cut line. You can place this anywhere in the image that you would like but it must be in the image that you have selected. So in this case, perhaps let's uh, say we want to increase the brightness of this, uh, of this. Let me zoom in just a bit so we can see it a bit clearer. So let's say we want to edit the brightness of this island here. Let's go back and select the image. And so we have this floating point that I just put in. It'll make a radial change around that area or darken. So I'm going to undo that. Um, so that will make a radial area, and uh, it will not affect other dodging points. That's the rule of thumb. They, they do not affect each other. So let's say, for example, I wanted to edit specifically only around this, this island, but I didn't want to affect the water, as you can see it has in here. So one of the techniques that you can use is if you place a wall of dodging points between it, then it will stop. So here we can, you see it's not affected anywhere past those points, but it's affected the island itself. Um, so that's a good way to prevent dodging points from, or use, to use dodging points to prevent uh, certain areas of the image to not be, uh, to be uh, affected. We also have an overall brightness and contrast for the image. If you feel like this image was perhaps too bright or too dark, uh, for example, we can use these four icons up here. So you can do the brightness. You can do the contrast. 
So reduce and increase the contrast in certain ones, and same, the same uh, toolbar is used for here. Um, so that, that can be useful. Um, but also for every different type of editing type we have, um, you can also edit specific channels. So you can do only the RGB, red, green, or blue, or all of them. Uh, so let's say this image itself, maybe we think it's uh, too green. So we can go ahead into the green. This is now, this entire toolbar is now working in the green mode. Um, and you can uh, increase and decrease the brightness of the green channel. So increase, decrease. And same with the contrast of the green channel. So, and that, that works for dodging points as well. So if we thought that this dodging point was perhaps a little too, um, perhaps a little too green, <laughs> then we can, uh, you know, or perhaps red, then we can go ahead and change the, um, using the dodging point, we can change, you know, it's more blue. Um, you can also go ahead and uh, edit specific, um, if you want to view this in perhaps near infrared, we have our near infrared band here. You can apply that. And as you'll notice, all of our changes that we've made in the um, RGB stuff has also been in effect at the uh, near infrared. So I'm just going to apply a quick enhancement so it looks a little more proper. There we go. So all of the changes that we've made here are also in the near infrared, so it carries over throughout all the bands. I'm just going to go back to red, green, and blue mode using the RGB mapper up here. Apply that new enhancement. There we go. And also to help specific uh, imagery, when, you, when you're doing uh, lots of editing, you might find uh, you, you might need different kinds of tools. So let's say, for example, we have an image that is just too bright and too dark, and that's just what happened in the image. And, you know, we can't quite, that was just something that the automatic stuff didn't quite get, if it had perhaps some glint. Um, we have one, one way of doing it is the compensate pair point, where if you click this, It'll toggle it on, and now it'll take this point, and then you can go ahead and t increase the contrast and brightness, and as you see, it affects both sides by darkening one side and brightening the other side. So you can go ahead and tweak around here until you find an area that looks, you know, perhaps that's, that's satisfying to you. Um, then you can hide the cut lines if you need to, using the hide the cut lines, and you know that that looks pretty dead on <laughs> for something that we just balanced here. Um, and you can also do the same, if we show the cut lines again, uh, you can also do the same if you want to just adjust the pair point. So in this case we have this image over here selected, um, and it will be, it'll, uh, you'll change the brightness and contrast of this side. Um, but then if you want to adjust the, the other side, then you go ahead and click toggle on the adjust pair point, and you'll be able to adjust the other side. So you can use this tool to very easily go between different areas without actually have to, having to select each one and then select the, the, uh, adjacent, the corresponding point on that image. 